All right, so in this video, we're gonna be talking about tangents and normals. Um, now, tangents and normals come up in a couple of different contexts within multivariable calculus. And the procedures for finding either the tangent vector or the tangent plane are gonna be different in these different contexts. And sometimes students find them very confusing because they're not used to working with them together. Um, so, particularly before taking the final exam where you may have to do multiple of these methods, uh, I would recommend making sure that you go through and you review all of them and kind of keep in mind what some of the differences are and when to use which strategies. And so that's some of the things that uh, I wanna focus on, but we're also just gonna go through and do some worked examples for each of the different cases. So we're gonna start with parametric curves in three space. Now, when you're dealing with parametric curves, uh, when you calculate the, um, the derivative, you're going to get something like the tangent. So it's going to point along the curve, but then in a straight line from a single point, but it's going to be a vector, uh, not a plane. Uh, when we deal with surfaces, we deal with planes. Um, but when we're dealing with curves, we just get a vector. And then there is a normal vector that is perpendicular to that tangent vector. And then there is actually also a binormal vector, a third component, since we're in three space, that is perpendicular to both the tangent vector and the normal vector. So we're gonna go and we're gonna calculate all of those. Now, if we consider this parameterized curve, we want to find the unit tangent vector, and then we'll fi find some of these other ones from there. Now, some of the problems with finding a unit tangent vector is that we're going to have to calculate the length of our tangent vector in order to make it a unit. And if our uh, length of our vector varies as with time changes, then our derivatives that we're gonna to have to take each time are gonna get more and more complicated. Um, sometimes uh, you will see some problems talk about the normal plane for a uh, parameterized curve in three space. Uh, basically, they're just talking about the plane that is perpendicular to the tangent vector. So the first thing that we're gonna to do to calculate the tangent vector is we're going to take the derivative now, uh, when we take the derivative, we just take the derivative with respect to t of each component. And here we end up with 3i minus j plus 2k based on our original equation. This is the tangent vector, but typically we want the unit tangent vector. And so we need to calculate the length of this vector and then divide our tangent vector by it. So you will see this notation the unit tangent vector is typically represented by this capital T, and it is just R prime over the magnitude of R prime. And R prime here, uh, the magnitude of it is going to come from this three squared is nine, negative one squared is one, that gives me the 10, and then two T squared gives me the four T squared. Now, in general, the first step to find the unit tangent vector is not so bad where things are going to get more complicated is when we have to do the next step. Now the unit normal vector, the principal unit normal vector um, is going to require us to take the derivative of the tangent vector and then divide by its magnitude. But that means in our example that we have the square root with the T involved in it in the denominator. So we're going to have a quotient rule or something like that uh, product rule with a chain rule involved in order to try to calculate this derivative. So let's let's go through the process. So the first thing that we have, I'm going to represent this as a multiplier function uh, raised to the negative one half power. And then we're going to have the original tangent vector, the original r prime vector here to the side. Now there is a, um, again, I'm gonna treat this like a product rule. Uh, my, you know, you can treat this as a quotient rule, but in the end, you're gonna get the same answer either way. So treating this like a product rule with the chain rule involved, 
the derivative of this, I'm going to bring down my negative one half, reduce my power of my my parentheses multiplied by the derivative of the inside, which is my 8t, multiplied by my original second function. And then I'm going to have my original first function. And the derivative of this is just going to be 0, 0, and then 2 in the k component. Now, in order to make um, this constant uh, common denominator, I have a 3 halves power in the denominator on the first term. Um, my negative 1 half and my 8 are going to multiply to give me the negative 4 out here. I'm going to put this in the denominator with my original vector. But then this one has only a one a square root, one square root, not three square roots in the denominator. So I'm going to multiply the top and the bottom by another copy of this 10 plus 4t squared. That will make my denominator the same in both of these terms. And I'll get an extra 10 plus 4t squared up here multiplied by my k component. And then I'm going to distribute my negative 4t and my 10 plus 4t squared and collect my corresponding components. So here I distributed my negative 4t. Here I distributed my 10 plus 4t squared, my single fraction. And then I combine my i, j's, and k's, negative 12ti and 4tj. And in the eight, in the k component, the negative 8t squared and the 8t squared cancel, and I'm left with just 20. So that is the derivative, that's the numerator, the derivative of my tangent vector. And then from here, I need to find the magnitude of this vector. Now, the denominator is just going to, is just the function. So it's just the denominator. The numerator is going to give me another component. And so I'm going to find the magnitude of this top part. And it turns out that if I square this, I get this. I square this, I get this. Square of 20 is 400. Combine my similar terms. And then factor out what I can. I can take out a 16 from both of these. And 16 squared is 4. So that comes out. And when I multiply my original t prime by the reciprocal, of this expression, that 3 halves power cancels out, the square root ends up in the denominator, and the 4 will reduce with most of these terms. So you see my 3 halves powers go away, my 4 reduces this to minus 3, this to 1, and this to 5, and what I have left in my denominator is this, and in fact, if you look at the components, this is, um, if you square this, this is 9t squared, and this is 1t squared. Add them together, you get 10t squared. Here's my 5. This is 25. So this is, in fact, you can see from the simplified version, this is a unit vector. And then the last thing to calculate for these 3D parametric curves is the binormal vector. Now, not every problem is going to ask you for the binormal vector, but this is the third uh, vector that we would need in three space. Uh, sometimes there's a need to have a system, uh, a, a coordinate system that moves along with the particle as it moves along the curve. And so you're unit tangent, your unit normal, and your bi unit binormal vector would then be those three-dimensional coordinates that you need. Now, the way that we obtain the binormal vector is not by taking derivatives or anything. We simply take the cross product of our unit tangent vector and our unit normal vector, and then go from there. Now, in this case, I'm going to pull out the, the denominators, the functions in the denominators, pull them out front, and then just take the cross product of the numerator, the vector pieces. Um, and so when I calculate that, um, I'm going to get my i component is negative 5 minus 2t squared. My j component is 15 plus 6t squared. My k component 
is going to be 3t minus 3t. That's going to give me a 0. And then I'm going to end up with these things just back in the denominator again. And when you try to um, uh, calculate the magnitude of this, you do in fact find that this is actually the a unit vector as well. So because the by the tangent and normal vectors were already normal vectors, the binormal vector comes out to be a by a unit vector as well. So even though the it looks really hideous, nonetheless, it is actually a unit vector. Now, if we are given a point to analyze um, the function at, then we have to do this after the equations have been obtained. Um, now, you don't have to wait um, for the binormal vector. You do have, because you're taking derivatives of the function and then the unit tangent vector, um, you do have to wait to plug things in until you get both of those tangent and normal vectors. But once you have obtained those tangent and normal vectors, you can plug their point in in order to get the binormal vectors. So you don't necessarily have to work with all those crazy t's and things. You can plug it in and get a constant uh, in order to then finish doing that last step of the calculation. But you can't plug in the constant before you take the derivatives. 